So Astro just finally released its new database, which was super timely after the big announcement last week or a couple weeks ago from PlanetScale. So they actually announced AstroDB a little bit early. It was supposed to come out like basically this week, but they announced it early because of the PlanetScale news. And that was basically PlanetScale, which is a company that I used to work for. I was actually let go from PlanetScale over a year and a half ago. PlanetScale on the same day did a lot of layoffs and then also completely got rid of their free tier for their database. And if you've ever looked at PlanetScale, it's actually pretty incredible. And a lot of people were starting to use it for the free tier for personal projects. And now that's completely gone. And Astro took the opportunity to announce that they're coming out with their own database platform. And you can see here, they, they uh, reference this as database platform for content driven websites. And this is really, I think, kind of a first look at maybe how Astro was going to make money. And for a framework, I think that's actually really important and kind of insightful is you don't really know how frameworks are going to make money. They're funded, et cetera. But then now you start to see maybe there's some paid tooling around. But one of the most important things about this database is that Fred, the creator of Astro, has publicly announced the free tier of this will never go away. There's no credit card required and you can cancel anytime. So that sort of stuff is obviously very important in the wake of the Planet Scale news. But what exactly is the Astro database platform? And they talk about content driven websites. I think my guess is that this is going to be for data that doesn't scale super, super big. And so you think about content driven websites, like there's only so many blog posts that you can have. There's only so many like markdown sections or something like that, that you could have in your application versus really huge applications that could have terabytes of data in a database. I don't think that's what this is for. And we'll kind of learn more about this as we go, but they talk about this being fully managed SQL. So this is something they're going to manage for you. You don't have to set up any infrastructure or anything like that. And they talk about this being fast, lightweight, and ridiculously easy to use. Now, those three adjectives or phrases or whatever, fast, lightweight, ridiculously easy to use, those to me imply what I was already kind of thinking, which is this is not meant for like full scale, huge applications. This is meant for content for a website. And I think that makes sense. I think this is a good play, but it also really reminds me of something that I've played with in the past, which is Torso. So Torso is uh, simple. They talk about um, countless. They can spin up a bunch of databases. They talk about it being embedded and they talk about this being super easy to use. And I believe, I have to confirm this for sure, I believe this is actually built on the same technology that Torso is built on. So I don't know if they have a partnership behind the scenes. I don't know if they collaborated or anything like that. I have no idea. Uh, but there does seem to be some similarities here, which is kind of interesting. So this is currently in early preview. Let's scroll down a little bit more and kind of learn more about what they talk about here. So I think this is what I was saying. Powered by LibSQL, I think torso lib sql i think it is the founders of torso that created lib sql and that's what torso is built on so there's a lot of similarities here to torso which is really interesting something that a lot of people have really loved as well and that is known for being really lightweight and efficient uh, and they talk about proven enterprise grade performance so the fact that this can scale up um, and maybe do more than what i'm thinking is great also Scale with confidence, scale up to meet demand and scale down to zero dollars when inactive. Now, this is super, super important because the one of the reasons that Planet Scale had to get rid of their free tier is because their free tier was so expensive. Now, Planet Scale would put your database to sleep if you didn't use it for a certain amount of time. And I still think there was costs associated with it. I'm not entirely sure when that was uh, inactive or asleep. But this is saying basically this is not going to cost Astro anything when you scale down to zero, when you're not using it. And that is really, really important. And that enables them to make the promise of we're going to have this thing for a long time and it's not going to go away. That's really cool. Now this gets really interesting. I'm kind of curious to try this. So let me know if you want to see a, a video like actually using this hands on, but this talks about this being automatically configured, including a TypeScript ORM with full type safety out of the box. I'm a huge advocate of ORMs and type safety with um, with your database. Now, a lot of people love to write raw SQL and they feel like they have complete control. That's great. I don't want to, nor do I need to 99% of the time do that. I would much rather use an ORM and have that type safety. So the fact that they already have this kind of factored in is no surprise at all. So they actually have a couple of examples here. Like if you're building a blog post or you're doing comments or you have forms and they talk about uh, all the things or examples of what you might need. So. They talk about defining a table uh, for this form submission, full name, email, message, and then you're just seeing like a column object that you can tell what type of property you're gonna have associated with it. 
I think blog is the most common here. So you see similar stuff here. And then you see an example query where you can query from posts and then you have your equal syntax. And hey, actually, this is interesting. Does that just happen to use my name? I guess I'm just really lucky. I don't know. That's funny. So anyway, it seems pretty simple. That's really neat. And then they have a section here on off. Oh, I guess if you're doing like a user's table. So they actually have the ability to define primary keys. They have uh, usernames. They have the ability to uh, create sessions in here with a number and then have that be a reference to uh, user.columns.id. That's pretty cool. Um, the one thing I, I am always, I don't actually know what ORM this is. The one thing I'm always a little hesitant of with ORMs is having to learn another syntax to do the same thing. I think that's something you have to do. It totally makes sense. But this is like getting to be able to do this with the references. That's a little tricky. It's something you have to figure out. So now they can uh, check a session from a cookie, then do a lookup in the database and uh, get the user where it matches uh, that session. That's pretty cool. So that's a, a very basic auth example where you can track. Uh, you can create sessions in database, track that in a cookie, then reference the cookie, use that to look up the user and then get the user information based on that user ID. Pretty neat. So this talks about everything that you need uh, included design for the Astro ecosystem, which may this is this is actually going to be really cool. So it's uh, SQL. It's a TypeScript ORM. I don't know if it says specifically what that is. Uh, zero lock in, which is pretty interesting. So you can export this as a uh, as SQL or CSV. This is pretty standard with databases these days. Most of them have some way to do that. Now, one thing I do really like is that they have a, a, spread, a visual spreadsheet, a rich text editor, or raw SQL console. I think this is something that all databases at this point should have. I love the ability to just quickly go in and do a quick view of my data and not have to write all the raw SQL for that or not have to write my own admin dashboard to be able to do those same exact queries. So global distribution, this is databases in eight regions around the world, including uh, EU and Japan. This is really interesting because I'm curious do, are they doing replicas with this? Are they just like you have to choose one region or are they doing read replicas or something like that? That would be really interesting to know. Now, here's a really cool one is instant local development, no dependencies, uh, no Docker, no problem. That's really cool. I'm assuming just running uh, lib SQL uh, locally is fairly easy to set up. And that's great because you can do all your dev work locally, then have your uh, database for production or separate databases for other environments have webhooks that you can integrate with other third party tools. That's kind of cool. And then uh, this is really neat. I'm curious to learn more about this. The GitHub automation means powerful scalability, the visual UI. I, yeah, that doesn't give me details about what that actually is, but anything integrated with GitHub and development workflow obviously is a huge thing. So, all right, so let's see pricing on the free tier, unlimited databases, unlimited applications. Storage is one gig per month. Row reads one billion included. I've never read 1 billion rows ever. Uh, row rights is 1 million included. And they don't even have, interesting, I'm assuming they will add like an actual paid tier eventually. Obviously, that's part of the plan, I would think. Um, so they only represent the free plan here and you can get started there. So anyway, uh, with your Astro project, as you would expect, they have this integrated with uh, Astro integrations where you can do an MPX Astro add DB and then you're all kind of set up. So uh, anyway, this is super exciting. Astro is one of my favorite frameworks. If you watch the channel, you definitely already know that. So if you'd like a hands-on approach to testing this out, let me know in the comments below and I'll um, I'll put a video together doing that because I think this is going to be super cool. Uh, anyway, Astro is amazing. I have a full course on Astro. If you're interested in learning more about it, uh, you can check it out at astrocourse.dev. Uh, maybe we'll do some updates. I, I can't commit to this, but maybe we'll do some updates to add in AstroDB. That would be super, super cool. Uh, but anyway, it's a full course, front end, back end, server side rendering, static site generator, auth, basic auth. It's it's a lot of cool stuff. So you can check it out at astrocourse.dev. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about AstroDB in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.